Who hasn't wanted to escape the world and live in a secluded, floating fort in the ocean that's been turned into a hotel? Well, now you have that opportunity if you have a few million dollars to spare, as several former military forts off the coast of Great Britain were converted into luxury hotels. And now, they're for sale, and you can pick them up. Today, we're going to take a look at each of the three forts on the market that are owned by the same company. We'll examine their history, just how much each of them is, and the features you can enjoy. So, let's get started. Based in Solent, a strait between Britain and the Isle of Wight, and located near the city of Portsmouth, sits what's known collectively as the Solent Palmerston Forts. There's No Man's Land Fort, Spitbank Fort, St. Helens Fort, and Horse Sand Fort. These locations have even appeared in TV productions, with the Doctor Who serial The Sea Devils using No Man's as a location in 1972. The forts were created as protection against possible attacks from France. From 1865 to between 1878 and 1880, all four of the strongholds were built. Horse Sand and No Man's Land were 200 feet in diameter and fully armored-plated while St. Helens and Spitbank were 150 feet in diameter and only armored on the front. According to the UK's Royal Navy Museum, excluding weapons, St. Helens cost £123,311, around $169,400 today, to construct. Spitbank cost £167,300, or $229,900, Horse Sand cost £424,694, or $583,600, and No Man's Land was £462,500, or $635,500, giving us a grand total of £1,177,805, or $1.6 million. With inflation, that would be the same as 144.9 million pounds, or 199.9 million dollars. By the time the first fort was completed, the fear of a French invasion had long passed. The structures wouldn't become active again until World War I and then World War II. According to reports, by the time the latter event came around, life on the forts was very difficult. After all, they had suffered years of neglect. As such, only those serving that couldn't swim were stationed on the forts to limit people abandoning their post and swimming back to shore. After the wars, the structures were decommissioned from military service. By 1963, the Royal Navy tried to offload the forts to a private buyer. However, there were no takers. It wasn't until the 1980s when a buyer came forward to purchase Spitbank. They then turned the fort into a museum. Later, the other citadels found new owners as well. No Man's Land was eventually turned into a luxury hotel by Bob's Leisure Limited. Back then, corporate clients could book the stronghold for events at £25,000 or $34,400 per day. In 2004, the fort was valued at £14 million or $19.2 million. However, also that year, disaster struck. One guest ended up catching Legionnaire's disease. Investigators found the Legionella bacteria at No Man's. As a result, the hotel was closed. The owners soon went out of business and the bank put No Man's on the market for three million pounds, or $4.1 million. In early 2006, Lexi Holding bought the fort. But six months later, they also went under with debts over 100 million pounds around $137.4 million. In 2008, Harmesh Puni, who was the director of Bob's Leisure Limited, claimed he was still the owner of No Man's. So he barricaded himself inside the fort. He was eventually evicted. In 2009, the administrators for No Man's sold the fort for just £910,000, around $1.25 million. By 2009, Spitbank was the first of the forts to be picked up by Clarenco for more than £1 million, or $1.4 million. Clarenco then spent £3.5 million, or $4.8 million, on refurbishing the fort into a luxury hotel that was opened in 2011. By 2012, the group bought No Man's and Horse Sand as well. They plan to expand their retreat portfolio as well as create a living museum on horse sand. 
The fourth Palmerston Solent Fort, St. Helens, remained with an undisclosed private owner. It's reported that Mike Clare, the owner of Clarenco, had spent around 5.5 million pounds, or 7.6 million dollars, to buy all three forts. He then spent between 8 million pounds, nearly 11 million dollars, to 12 million pounds, around 16.5 million dollars, on refurbishing the forts. By 2015, the hotel on No Man's was open to guests. But by 2020, the three forts were put up for sale. At the time of writing, Horse Sand is still listed for £750,000, or $1 million. Spitbank for £4 million, around $5.5 million, and No Man's is up for £4.25 million, around $5.8 million. As for the features for each fort, firstly, we have Horse Sand. Beyond being more run down, the Citadel is essentially the same as when it was built, minus any potential dangerous equipment across 99,000 square feet of living space. The listing states it has, quote, 100 chambers and living quarters and the original gun carriages and armored plated walls, unquote. As for Spitbank, it has 33,000 square feet of interior space surrounded by 15 foot thick granite walls. It comes with nine bedrooms and nine full bathrooms. Since it's been operating as a three-story hotel, it has guest suites and many luxurious features, such as the Crow's Nest. This is a contemporary bar located high up in Spitbank. It's able to fit up to 60 people for events such as weddings. There's the Officer's Mess restaurant that is decorated with original ironwork to give it that authenticity. For those wanting a more ambient drink, there's the Victory Bar. Complete with a Laurent Perrier champagne bar, the area also has various games for guests to enjoy. For more private events, there's the Wine Cave. It's available for wine tasting and for a more quiet drink. If you want to enjoy a meal in more open surroundings, guests can dine in the courtyard. Finally, there's the Roof Terrace. There you can find a sun deck, a hot pool, a sauna, and a fire pit. Spitbank also offers a host of activities, including cocktail making, rum tasting, wine and cheese tasting, champagne sabreage, and fishing. As for No Man's Land Fort, there are 23 bedrooms and 9 full bathrooms within 99,000 square feet of interior space. As for features, there's a TV room, a snooker room, a pool table room, a library, a games room with a card table and chessboard, a spa, a sauna, a hot pool, a fire pit, and even a laser battle room. As for food and drink, there's the Lord Nelson Pub, the Cabaret Club, the Scuttlebutt, and the Mess Hall. Guests could even stay within the fort's lighthouse and take in some of the stunning views. Unfortunately, the forts are not currently accepting guests at the time of writing. Previously, the cost of rooms started at around $400 per night. But if you're willing to pay to own one fort or buy all three for a combined 9 million pounds or $12.4 million, then you can enjoy all of the features and rooms soon. Final fact finish! If you want to move to England and have a boatload of cash, then we suggest one of the most expensive houses on the market, at the time of writing, Hampton Hall. This luxurious mansion located in London is currently listed for nearly $40.2 million. This 11-bedroom abode comes with staff quarters, a bowling alley, a gym, and an indoor pool. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.